If you enjoy the channel and our video content and would like to support us, you can do this in a couple of ways. You can sign up to our Patreon site, which is a monthly subscription to one of our four tiers, each giving you something different from early access interviews up to exclusive unseen footage. There's also the option of a one-off donation via PayPal, which allows you the option to donate an amount of your choice. Both options really help to keep this channel going and to continue putting out regular content for you good folk. So please take a look at aircurrentreview.tv forward slash donate and I thank you in advance. Thank you and enjoy. So can you talk us through the cockpit of the tornado and was it anything similar to the Buccaneer? No, not really. <laughs> it was uh, it was well laid out, yeah. uh, certainly for the start. It was dominated by a, a moving map and radar display, a big round display. And that was great. And then two TV displays, which are a bit high. I would have preferred those lower, only so that the forward view would have been a bit better. Did all the systems work <coughs> like pretty well uh, from back in the day for the new technology? Um, well, our usual raft of teething troubles and a bit of a shortage of spares at times. Uh, Aeroplanes were coming into service faster than the, the spares uh, supply system would, uh, would deliver them. Um, but when it worked, it worked really well. And I mean really well. I did a, a, a green flag exercise at Nellis Air Force Base and the system would, would show accuracy to 60 feet and after an hour and a half I landed back at Nellis and it was 60 feet out. Wow, that's it was, incredible. And I'd not touched it, it was phenomenal. When it, when it worked, yeah, yeah. it was really good. Before we move on, because you mentioned green flag there, can you talk us about this? Because I think you won the first tornado uh, flag, weren't you? Yes. Yeah, green flag was a sort of electronic version of red flag. Um, and of course, the, the tornado had a really comprehensive electronic warfare suite. We had a, a, a big, capable jamming pod and a big, I think it was a Swedish chaff and flare pod. I think we could dump as much chaff as any aeroplane except the B-52. <laughs> um, and we were cleared to, to use it and we had a, a good radar warning receiver. Uh, so the idea was we were supposed to go there and fly moderately high for a low level aeroplane. I think they wanted us to fly at 750 feet. Uh, we didn't. Um, because part of our rationale was that the lower you were, the less chance you were uh, that you had of being detected. Yeah. We didn't want to be detected because the electronics wouldn't work all the time necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, you know, frequency agility and things is often difficult to keep up with. Yeah, yeah. And did you, what aircraft were there on that flag? And oh. did you work with the F 111s or anything like that? Yeah, we did. I um, mean, you know, there were big packages. We had everything from F 5s to F 18s. Nice. And the packages would be, would be mixed. Um, you'd have wild weasel support, so they would go in ahead, uh, fighters overhead to counter the red air. Uh, and that happened, uh, that happened every day apart from one. And on one day, the weather was poor. So that's it. <laughs> they said, right, we're not flying. And what our boss said, that must have been. Excuse, excuse me, yeah, <laughs> we can TFR. So off we oh, went yeah. on our own into the range, auto TFR. And again, there were no confirmed kills against us. Really? Uh, yeah, so it was well. really satisfying to be the only ones out there. I think we flew a six ship that day. And to be the only ones out there, out in the range and have all of the threats uh, against you and still to come back knowing we delivered the weapons on target because that's all filmed and uh, and had landed back largely unscathed that's amazing mm. i think you sent me a picture did you win a, a bombing competition or something like that was that was a little bit later about later? a year later yeah and that was um uh, against the USAF Strategic Air Command. It yeah. was there. They have this annual competition. Uh, it's about improving their ability to deliver nuclear weapons. And the RAF had been invited the year before with the tornado and had gone over and won it. And uh, I think it took the Americans a bit by surprise. <laughs> they invited the RAF a second time and 27 Squadron uh, was tasked to go over there. I don't think the Americans were quite as accommodating as they had been the first time. Um, what, just because you won the first time? I think, yeah, I think it was a, a, a bit of a shock. <laughs> but they, they lost our flight plans. We had, I mean, one of my best memories is a, a very attractive young lady turned up. I was on my own in the planning room and she turned up with this plate of 
home-baked cookies and she had on a flying suit with a zip and down and she wanted some basic information yes <laughs> yeah go on. i didn't we fall see, for yeah. that yeah. <laughs> yeah i did take the cookies and i kept her talking for a few minutes before sending her on her way and we enjoyed the cookies very much yeah yeah how long were you over there for <laughs> oh we like... were over there for must have been two or more months and were you on base or were you living yeah outside? we were on a, an air force base living off in a hotel but uh, but working on the base it was quite a an intense time, six days a week, and the, wow. the sorties were six and a half hours long. So we had a number of practice sorties. Obviously, we had to get used to the operating area. Uh, then a number of practice sorties, and then the competition sorties themselves. And it was day and night flying. So you didn't uh, really get time for yourself? Uh, oh, we got a little bit. Yeah, we right. got a little bit. You can't, you can't work for that length of time, six days a yeah. week, not not to maintain a level of performance, which mm -hmm. is what we had to do. So yeah, we did get time to look around and take it easy. Uh, and the guys who weren't competition crews, who so were four and two reserve competition crews, uh, they had a you know a little bit more time to uh, to go around and see things.